Thank you. Good morning. We can all stand for a seat. the Lord. You know, I like that line in that song that talks about a little more grace to, you know, the other day I was listening, I think it was yesterday, and I was just uh, on the radio or listening to the radio stations and going to all the different Christian ones. And I think on every Christian song, as soon as I turned to it, it said grace. Talking about grace, you know, that grace that God has given us through Jesus, that we can have forgiveness of our sins. That is the best news, man especially in this world so full of bad news. Uh, kids, you're dismissed for Children's Church. I know uh, um, uh, there's a, a good activity that Janice has planned for you, which we believe will benefit others in our congregation. Um, good morning to each of you that is here in this building. Good morning, Weiss family. Uh, good to see you there online. 
Um, I think, I, I'm not sure, I think they haven't been here because they're trying to provide extra care and be available for Debbie's dad, uh, continue to lift up Debbie's dad um, as he is in the hospital. Still, I think not, you know, doing well. I think he has C. diff, is, uh, is that how it's pronounced? That's what we just, uh, I know, and I, they're hearing me now, so she, you know, if there's any corrections there, let me know, guys. But um, Debbie had told me that the other day, so we really need to keep lifting him up. I think a lot of you know how serious that can be, and I saw the update this morning that is, uh, he needs his lungs drained um, so he can breathe better, and it, he is, his health is declining in the hospital, so they're talking about giving him over to a nursing home, I think, to try to help him have that extra care that he needs. So we want to continue to lift up Debbie's dad um, as he has been through a lot, you know, and I praise God that as Debbie said, she senses the prayers and that they are having an effect. So we are thankful to God for that. So thank you for sharing that, Debbie and Eric and Weiss family. We desperately miss you guys, just like we miss the Hogan Millers. Don't know what's going on there with the Hogan Millers, but continue to pray for them. I do know they're dealing with things and they need our prayers. And, you know, that's why we're here as a people. We want to pray for each other as well as, uh, you know, um, send notes of encouragement or call people. Let them know we're thinking of them. But let's go to our Lord right now uh, with these uh, um, with this request for him to show up, share with us his will through his Holy Spirit's presence. Father, we know that you live in us. We don't have to say, Holy Spirit, um, show up because you're already in us. But I pray that during this next hour that God, we will merely respond to the way the Holy Spirit moves us to in such a way that, Father, we are uh, giving you every bit of worship, every bit of surrender that you deserve. Uh, God, we are just asking that, Father, you're going to have your way during this time and that nothing we want, nothing from selfish, prideful, driven emotions will cause us to uh, do something that, Father, is not in your will. I pray that, God, we're going to be transformed as a result of what takes place today. And this isn't just going to be viewed as another worship service but it's going to be a truly transformational time in which God's in charge and we're giving you first things first. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I'll tell you what, you know, as we look forward to heaven uh, and what it awaits us, wow, better is going to be one day there uh, than thousands elsewhere, right? Let's sing that together today.
like a thousand years and you know even after a thousand years the eternity will continue as we bask in the glory of God and give him the praise he deserves and you know uh, that's something special to look forward to and uh, you know and that we can rejoice in knowing where we're going even now and that's what God wants he wants us to understand the kingdom of heaven from the moment you become a believer that's when it starts and then you realize the fruition of it when you're with him forever face to face you know today I just want to bring up uh, just a few things a uh, board meeting Tuesday six o'clock uh, board members please make sure you're here first one of the new year uh, so we'll meet here at six prior to that at four o'clock we'll have our prayer time so prayer time at four o'clock uh, we'll make sure to uh, do that and then um, also a uh, men's group will uh, next time that we meet on our uh, Wednesday uh, men you know the first and third Wednesdays the next time we're going to meet at a restaurant I think we're going to meet at 4 or 4 30 at Angie's restaurant uh, if uh, that interests you men and you'd like to join us I'd love to have you Angie's is a great place uh, to you know fellowship uh, and get together and We'll uh, enjoy the time together. We want to do that prior to our beginning, our next men's group. And I'm going to tell you guys, uh, for you men that don't come, you're missing out. And I mean that. And I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm just telling the truth. Because I can tell you, the four of us that do this, uh, that have been doing it, mostly it, we get a lot out of it. And it's been encouraging. And what we talk about there, our motto is, what we say there stays there, right? And how important it is to have that place where you can share that transparency and vulnerability and, you know, encourage each other and really pray for each other. It's a great time, which I don't see Joe today, but I, I do ask that you'll remember Sandra Schaefer's not feeling well. So we want to um, lift her up to you. My wife has got definitely has the flu, so uh, she's hoping she'll be able to make it tomorrow for work. But um, she started getting it a couple days ago, so if you'll lift her up. But um you know a lot of people not feeling the best but i do want to bring up in the way of announcements before i get sidetracked too much uh on the back of the bulletin there is a qr code if you want to scan that puppy with your cell phone you can do that and it will link you up uh, to be able to give online or you can go to our facebook page or church website two other places uh that if you want to give that way that's uh, something that we want to make easier for everyone. You know, I uh, just ask um, that uh, as you consider uh, this new year, that you'll uh, take into account, and I know it's hard, but I'm asking you to up your priorities this year. Let's make our priority number one to serve God first through the time we devote in Sunday morning worship, through our commitment through the week. It's all about worshiping Him every day of the week every moment that we can are you going to put God first this year I'm praying that you will but you have to answer that for yourself and that's what we want to do this year so uh, let's uh, um, continue in our worship and uh, to do so I just ask that you'll uh, stand with us as we sing together sons and daughters Oh, 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 
son or a daughter of God today? I am Amen. glad to be a daughter of God. Oh yes, good testimonies. I forgot. Amen. Get it in there, sister. Oh. 
And I do feel like there are emergencies, there are things going on. I understand that completely. But get in touch with the church, the church. Uh, call and be verbal so that the pastor can share with us what is going on. You don't know what it's like looking forward to coming to church on a Sunday. And this is what we have here. We miss our family. And if I miss my church family, what does Jesus miss? I love the Lord. Amen. Do you want to also welcome Peggy uh, Pettis Comigas, who just joined us? Good morning to you. Uh, you know, it's, it's great to see you on here with us. So uh, welcome. Uh, who else has a praise that you'd like to give today? Yeah, Margie. I want to stand up for this one. Thank you, Peggy. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Debbie. Are you saying trans? Transsexual. Okay. I had the opportunity to bring up the Lord with response the first day. The second day, it wasn't received so well. When I pray, I planted that seed. Amen. And that's all we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. That's all we ask of us is to spread it by planting seed. And they had the opportunity of meeting a young man, 25 years old, that came over to look at some work that needs to be done on the yard, believe God will have given him the opportunity to kind of do his things. He had a history. And three years ago, he found the Lord. And it was amazing to see the life in his eyes, the, the hunger, the fire he had. It was just inspiring. And I praise the Lord for those two gifts this week. Great, thank you for sharing that. Margie, anybody else would praise for that? Yeah, Tom? Then it was backing out of a parking place Thursday and went to our here. Nobody was hurt. It's just uh, superficial damage to the car, to their car. And they were Christians too. We were all just praising God. Nobody's hurt. Nobody's even Amen. Uh, shook up or rattled. Um, Emotionally, yes, but uh, nobody damaged. It was a wonderful thing. We're going to have an accident. We lost a lot of money in this thing. Well, amen. That it didn't end up being anything major. Thank you for sharing that, Tom. Anybody else with a praise? All right. You know, I do. You know. <clears throat> People don't want to come to church. That's their, that, that's their business. But let them get hurt. The first thing they say, oh, God, help me. You know? So we all have him in our hearts. It's just some people like it is a kingdom. But why get a kingdom? Something that's going to fool you and, and the blessings of God. It's great. You know? I mean, it's, it's a beautiful life that you love Jesus. Because yeah. he loved us first. Yes, he did. Because he first loved us, right? Amen. Who else with the praise? I'll look back here because I want to take it if anybody does. All right, well, let's go to him in prayer right now. Oh, before we do, I do want to bring up, somebody wanted me to make an announcement. There were a pair of glasses under the bulletin board that were found during cleaning. If those are your glasses, they're back there for you, okay? They're in the, underneath the bulletin board. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for uh, this opportunity, Lord, to be here, to Worship together. Thank you, God, for the needs that have been shared. And we say thank you for the needs because we understand that we are going to the one who can meet those needs. Not the wants. Lord, we know that many times there are things we want, but what we're praying is that you will meet our needs, providing for us our daily bread. 
Lord, we thank you for this time in history that we can minister in so many awesome things going on, Lord. So many opportunities. And whether you come back today or a thousand years or a million years from now, we pray we will be ready, God, and that we will help equip and arm the next generation to reach people for Jesus Christ. And God, I thank you that, Lord, the harvest is plentiful. But Lord, because the workers are few, we pray that you will use us to help raise up some workers to reach the harvest. And Lord, we ask that you will be with those who don't know you. More than anything, I believe that's what's important, God, is that people come to know Jesus as Savior. And we pray for a mighty wind of revival, a sweeping change and transformation that will take place in our nation and world that will cause people to see you alone are the only God there is and that you alone deserve to be worshipped. Father, I do want to uh, lift up uh, some of the things that you know those that, God, it seems like cancer is such a, a big issue, even more so now than at least I, it seems like I'm hearing about case after case in which, Lord, somebody else has been diagnosed with uh, cancer. I think of Pastor Jeff Martell with lung cancer, Lord, and I think of Pastor John in our district with pancreatic cancer, and I think of my cousin Donna, Lord, who was just diagnosed last week with, it's either, I think, breast cancer, they found it in a lump in her neck or down on her chest, and Father, I know that probably every person in here knows someone with cancer. And so, Lord, I pray that, God, you're going to get rid of this ugly disease. Even before we see you in eternity, I pray, Lord, that something will take place that will help this disease to be a thing of the past. And Father, I pray that you will be with those who are dealing with mental illness. And I say this as one who is unashamed to say I struggle with mental illness, but I thank you that I know one who can heal my mind. And I know one who has allowed for medicine at times to be used to help in that way to heal the mind. But Lord, I pray for those who may have emotional struggles. Uh, Lord, maybe they're having some other physical problem that they just don't know where they can receive healing from. Remind them they can go to you. And we're praying for their healing right now, Lord. We're praying for those, again, who most uh, undoubtedly but admittedly need help spiritually. And because, God, that's what matters most is that they have that spiritual healing. I do want to pray for the Hogan Millers. I know Bob asked specifically that we pray for his home and for his family. You know what their needs are. Provide for their needs. Lord, we pray for the Weeses. We want to continue to lift up Debbie's dad. Lord, as he's not doing well health-wise in the hospital, we pray for next steps to provide for his healing. And Lord, we know that, God, there's just so much on our mind. We could go on here for an hour praying for one prayer request after another. But what we're going to instead say is have your way with those things, that those needs, God, in which people just want your touch. Provide it for them, and I pray you're going to be the one that receives the praise as a result. In Jesus' name, everyone in this house of the Lord said, Amen. 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 And so, you know, really, before we even get to our, our cry uh, to the Lord that we need him, someone has for us a reading of the word today. If you'll stand for the reading of the gospel. This is from Isaiah 41, verses 10 through 13. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help.
so much don't we every day yeah. i tell you, you know for a few weeks recently i was going through a most emotional mental struggle a lot and i can tell you i feel that he has lifted me up once again out of it i just praise god for when we really go to him with our needs and our prayers he's there man he may not provide the answer we want uh but sometimes he does and sometimes it's not in our time but praise god that father knows best I want to give this praise that this lady that I used to, uh, where I used to pastor in Silver Lake, Indiana, she's joining us online right now. Lynn, good to see you. Uh, but she wanted to give a praise. She said, so thankful God goes before us and gives us the words to speak or to just sit with those in pain. We are walking, we are all walking each other home. Um, in fact, she knows this well, uh, or significant uh, other, uh, Terry, please pray for Terry is in stage four cancer, I believe right now. And we'll meet the Lord soon, face to face. Uh, but Lynn, I tell you, she knows about uh, some of these things. And yeah, I miss you, Lynn, uh, there in Indiana. Uh, but uh, continue to pray for Terry, if you would. Um, but uh, what a blessing. Again, in, you know, and, and I share with what Debbie's saying, but I know how discouraging it can be when you don't see people all the time in the building. But remember, they're joining us sometimes online 
I mean, right now, praise God for the six households that are. Um, you know, we're reaching people just not the same that they did before COVID. But praise God for what he's doing here in this place. And I mean, we got so much, guys, to be thankful for. We don't realize it. And you know what? I want to praise God so much the devil doesn't want to be around us. The Satan says, I don't want to be around that person anymore because he's praising Jesus too much. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't care. I, you know, let's praise him all the time. We may not do it all the time in our words, but let's do it through our actions to the point where state, Satan says, that stench, I can't take it anymore. It's the stench of Christ. And that's the stench I want. That's who I want to be with. So uh, I thank the Lord for his presence and his help every hour of every day. Beautiful songs. Well done, worship team, in choosing those songs today. And we want to continue uh, in this series, you know, what it takes to be a recharged church. And again, there's a reason I felt like I wanted to do this during the new year, because it's new opportunities that we have and that we can be a part of. Uh, and we can say, you know what? We don't want status quo, we want status best. We want to be who God wants us to be this year more than ever, all right? We talk about Jesus coming back, and he could soon, I don't know, but don't you want him to find you doing what he wants you to do? I hope so. I hope when he comes back and he says this in the Bible, will I find a people of faith? You alone can answer that. That's the wonderful thing about Christianity. We can help each other as a church, but we don't make the decision for each other. You do that. So how will you decide? Will you let the Lord truly reign in your life? So we need to ask ourselves as we continue in this series, how much are we going to really give over to God? I like Jackie shared that one time, Jackie Supple, you know, and it's a, a theme of her life that she wants to give her life over to surrender. Surrender is a big word, okay? And it's amazing. It's actually in Christianity, the word that shows how much victory you really want. It's actually through surrender that you gain victory, victory in Christ. So we want to talk about that as we continue in this series. But today I want to talk specifically in message four about being intentional in the embrace of diversity. And let me say right now, before I have some people leaving out of here saying, oh, that's a bad word in our culture. You're just trying to say diversity and sin. No, I'm not. I'm talking about being ready for God to bring all sorts of people from our community that may not fit our white Anglo-Saxon view of who should be here. Because if you were to go out and borrow it, and I guarantee you, not everybody looks like you. So why aren't they here? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So we really need to start off by asking ourselves, I believe, this question. Do our programs, practices, and the populations in our churches reflect the love of God at work in this community? And this isn't a scold, meaning this isn't me yelling at you. This is the case in many churches. You go to some churches and it, it's primarily or only african American. Or maybe you go to churches like ours and we're all white Anglo-Saxon. Or you go to another church and it's all Filipinos or Asians. But you know, when we get to heaven, it's not going to look like that. And that's the beautiful thing. But then God says, you know, I'd like to see a picture of that, at least a glimpse in your congregations now. I'd like to see maybe Asians, uh, African-Americans, Anglo-Saxons, uh, Vietnamese, Hispanic people worshiping together. Yeah, that would take maybe some translators. If any of you can do that, there we go. Let me know and uh, that will help us as we want to embrace that diversity here in the days ahead. It's been said that if we're going to have the type of intentional diversity and inclusion that we need, we'll start with that question that I said uh, as a church that I began with. Are our programs, are our practices, are what we're doing right now causing us to not just say we want that, but showing that we want that? And while accomplishing such a feat is not easy, in today's world of ministry, it should be considered a priority for us to answer it. In fact, Guyton, who you've heard me say his name over and over again, well, in his book, Reawaken, put it like this. The church must reflect God in a way that affirms others. 
Are we doing that? And the importance of knowing the uniqueness of each person and how God made them, I believe it's illustrated for us throughout the Bible. But in one passage in particular today, and I have for it on the screen there for you, or if you have your Bibles, please turn there. There the psalmist says in Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14, and I love this verse so much. I've used it many times uh, talking about uh, life and the importance of life. But we read there in the psalmist's words, for it was you talking to God. It was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Using this passage to help us get things going, let's look together at the following points to further ponder the importance of understanding diversity and inclusion in light of what God wants. And I wanna say before I get into this too much, I saw some of this during our last year's sports camp. We had some Muslims coming, hearing the gospel probably for the first time. We had some uh, kids, maybe African-American families that were there. We had several, in fact. Uh, we had many Anglo-Saxons that were there, many white Caucasian people. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. It was beautiful. And I think that's what God wants, man. He wants to see that more, but also in the context of our worship services. So let's look here then at the following two things. Number one, diversity is seen in the image of God. I hope you got that idea uh, across or read it there in that passage. But then also number two, Christ, even though we're different as believers, he's the common denominator. He's the one that we all share. He's the same thing in all Christians. Christ is that common denominator. But first, diversity is seen in the image of God. The more we grow spiritually, the more we see things as we ought. In fact, it might be said another way. If you're not seeing things as God wants you to, you're probably not growing spiritually. Or as one put it, through transformation, people can see who they are in God's eyes, not only in the eyes of the world. The Bible says it also in that we're not to be conformed to the pattern of this world, to be, but to be renewed by, uh, or to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay? In fact, the more you become like Jesus, the less you become like the world. Because the world didn't like Jesus. You know what they did? They nailed him to a cross. They made fun of him, spit on him, mocked him. And it maybe it might also be said, if they're not doing such things to you, maybe you're too much like the world. No, I'm not saying you need to go out there and make it a point to get people to hate you. I'm just saying what the Bible says, the godly will be persecuted. Now, don't go out of your way to say, okay, Gage says I need to be persecuted, so I need to go and do whatever I can to make people want to do that to me. No, all right? But there will be a time with some people in which they're just not going to like you because you're a Christian, and that's okay. It's not our job to make everybody like us. It is our job to love Jesus and to be truthful about what he wants us to be truthful about. In order then to undergo such a new spiritual life, the church must be a reflection of the image of God. And what this means is that we as a body of believers can't expect our join us and will change you model as a church to work if we're wanting to realize the kind of diversity that God desires to be realized in our gatherings. Meaning we shouldn't just say to people, join us in our church. And then in the back of our minds, it's like, we're going to make you like us. Our culture is what you're going to have to fit into. No, that really shouldn't be the case. In other words, we're not to try to get people to conform to what we're already like at Calvary Westland and think that when we're inviting diversity, that's what that means because they look different. So then let's give them our practices. Let's give them our culture and make sure they accept it. No, I believe we need to accept a different model as a church. And it's going to take preparation. As a church in the city of Barbara and Ohio, we need to know the identities present in this community. So we should ask, who are those people that live in this 44203 zip code? You know, that covers Norton and Barberton. Then where are they coming from? And 
and also why would they want to come and join our congregation in its ministries? And it's easy to say, well, how could they not? We do have a lot of good going on here. Man, the worship music, and you know, hopefully that Gage guy doesn't scare people away, but hopefully he does okay. All right, but you know, we got a lot of space that we can offer and help this community in many different ways. But then what are we doing to help reach people? We do speak Jesus here. I like that I put that on the sign. That's something that I read it. Okay, that isn't coming from here. Okay, you know, there's a lot of stuff, good stuff you can find online. You know, we speak Jesus, but to speak Jesus to different groups, you have to do different things so that they understand. For example, there might be quite a few people in our community who represent certain generations. There are a lot of baby boomers, all right, but there's also millennials, generation Xers like myself or generation Z, all right, that most recent generation. How do our current ministries then become relevant with those people to say we're willing to get to know you and speak Jesus with you in a way that you understand? A lot of those people honestly aren't gonna show up in the building for the first time, but they will look you up on Google, go to the website or on YouTube, or look you up on Facebook and learn about your church. All right, so what are we doing to reach those people uh, with Jesus? Uh, because that really needs to be questions that we're willing to answer. Finally, know that true diversity and our understanding of God's image actually bring Christians together in their churches. Or as one described it, unity is found in our Christian mission and service. Church unity is not achieved by our members becoming conforming, submissive robots. You know, we like people meaning to do everything that we say. Here's our list of rules and you do it. All right, if you don't, then you're not a member of our church. That's not what we should be like. And this can take place then when we become outward focused instead of trying to make people like we already are. But then what we realize over time is that even in our differences, we do have Christ in common and he's, becoming, he's become our common denominator. When all is said and done, our different appearances and our makeups are not as important as the same one that we all follow as followers of Jesus. You know those people over at Greater Galilee Baptist Church where Pastor Emmett is? They may not look like us, but I'll tell you what, they follow the same Jesus. I love my brother in Christ there. Pastor Ken, okay, they're at Abundant uh, Faith Ministries. You go to that church, they may not all look like us, but they follow the same Jesus. All right, and so it goes on at these different churches that are represented. You know, my pastor friend Brian Cowan used to be at the Taiwanese church. They don't look like us, but they follow the same Jesus. So as we think about that, we have the same one in common. We invited himself into our lives individually, personally, but we also need to understand when we became a Christian, what we did also then say is that we became one with the greater body of Christ, the church. So regarding what it means to be inclusive in a way that honors God, I like how Guyton said it in his book, Reawaken, when he wrote, the activated church, instead of that term, I use the term recharge, the activated church has room for all because it has the theological understanding to say our identity is that of being joined to Christ. That's what matters more than anything. It's not the cultural differences that we represent. It's the Christ that we follow, and he's the same for all Christians. In other words, as his disciples, we are all brought together inwardly, despite any differences we represent in our lives that are outward. Okay, I'm going to say it again. In other words, as his disciples, we are all brought together inwardly despite any of our differences in our lives that are outwardly. Knowing who we are in Christ will help us want to be intentional and be coming more inclusive with others. And how that happens might be in the following ways. Number one, be specific. For example, we might identify that there are certain races and ethnicities that are present in Barberton and Norton that are not present here in our congregation. 
So how are our church ministries reflecting that we have a desire to reach those people? Are they? Because if they're not, then maybe we need to start doing different ones that will say we want to reach those people. We need to figure out how we can best reach such people in a way that matches the demographics of this city. So that if someone were to come here, they could say, you know what? That must be what Barberton looks like. Because if they were to come here now and they were to say, this is what Barberton looks like, they wouldn't be seeing an accurate picture of Barberton. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There are a lot of people, in fact, I heard this statistic recently, uh, they're trying to get an English as a second language ministry started at the local YMCA. And I, I thank the Lord, by the way, if any of you are interested in that, my friend Pastor Brian Cowan is trying to get that going. But their goal and what they found is that there, I think it was over 2,000, was it? Or hundreds of people and within a two mile distance, I think it was, that don't know English. And so they wanted to start this English as a second language ministry, which event you teach them English and eventually you have the opportunity to share the gospel with them. There are so many people out there that aren't here. And so what can we do to say we love you enough that we want you to be a part of us here. The Apostle Paul said it like this, I am made all things to all men that I might by all possible means save some. He wasn't saying I'm gonna compromise my life and become sinful so I can reach sinners. What he was saying is whatever I can do that God would have me to do, I wanna do that to reach people. What's another thing we can do in here? And I should get a hearty amen out of this. Get women involved. Get women involved. Okay. Some have said maybe it's because of their empathy that women should be involved. Or maybe they understand because of the unfair ways that women have been treated in the past. Because of just who they are as women. But if we're honest, men, they offer a greater perspective that enables them to be more receptive to diversity and issues of inclusion. And when I say inclusion, again, I'm not talking about things that aren't godly. I'm talking about things that are and what God would want from us. And this can help prove helpful in the church, honestly, when women are placed in leadership roles that allow for them to reflect that kind of understanding that they have that we men don't have. Number three, let's get talking, let's have dialogues, let's have communication or conversations which say we understand this issue. If understanding what inclusion might look like in a Christian church is what we desire, then we have to talk. We have to talk about those things. This might mean that churches allow for others to speak up concerning their ideas and further discuss them. I don't mean during a worship service, but I mean when we have opportunities to, after or during the week, but also allow for them to disagree with the way ministry is being done and yet offer ways for it to improve. Okay, I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I believe when we come together, we can provide more answers that will allow for us to reach more people. Because I know the one who does, and he's made each of us unique so that we can share those ideas to reach more people. In Mark chapter eight, verses 34 through 36, we read the following words of Christ to the crowd and his disciples. And if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and the sake of the good news, you will save it. And then he went on to say, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? In the context of our topic, this verse might be saying to us that we have to be open to new people and new ways of doing things. In fact, man, uh, we are in the 21st century, am I right? I don't think we moved on to the 22nd yet. We're in the 21st century. We can't expect to do things like they were done in the early 1930s or 40s or 50s or even 1990s. Things have to be different or even the year 2000. Things are different. Every day the culture is changing. And if we're not investing in new ways to reach more people, 
honestly, we're doing a disservice to God because he has a heart for the different people that are out there that we need to have. And so if we're going to have that, that means we need to do things in a way that will show we have the heart of God. And as we give over control to answer God's call instead of our own, we will realize that his love for all who are a part of his diverse creation is something that we also share with him and other Christians. This, therefore, will allow for our desire to want to be more diverse and inclusive, to better reach others with the unchanging message of Christ Jesus. Let's pray for that heart right now. Heavenly Father, I just pray that with a heart that says, Lord, we love everyone. We understand that, God, some people might come in here with sin in their lives, but we're called to love them and share the truth with them, regardless of what they look like, even what they smell like, the clothes that they may be wearing, or maybe the life of sin that they came from. God, you call for us to be Jesus to them, to love them enough that they're going to want to give up that sin, and they're, wanting, they're going to want to get to know the one who can help them forgive themselves and yet, God, experience your forgiveness and peace in their life. Man, Lord, there are so many people, we know this right now in Barberton, who don't know you. And it needs to bother us that they don't. So help us, Lord, to begin shaping our ministries in a way in 2023 that say they matter. They matter to you and they matter to us. And we pray these things in the precious name of the one who died for all people, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so then next week, we're going to talk more specifically and sort of elaborate more on this issue and what it looks like to be a true witness in this community. That kind of a witness. We're going to want to be a holistic witness, H-O-L. And what did we see in the song today? Holiness is Christ in me. So your witness to the community is Christ in you. What does that look like? That's what we'll talk about. So go, be safe today. Sounds like we're going to get some more snow. So be safe. God bless you all.